Hello everybody, I'm John, this is JP Strategic Investments, and today we're talking, of course, about Patriot One Technologies. They just had their earnings report today, had their first earnings call today as well, um, so it was nice to actually listen in, get to hear Peter and Karen kind of give some extra context around what we got to see in the report. And so I'm just going to dive into the report. I'm going to kind of go over some negatives um, in the beginning because there were some negatives if you look at it especially purely from a financial standpoint from just the results for this quarter, um, and then get into some of the positives that I saw as well. Let's jump right into it here. What I have in front of me is kind of a spreadsheet that I've put together that helps us better look at the quarter over quarter growth for Patriot One Technologies, because that's kind of what I care about more right now, rather than maybe the year over year, um, really, we're looking at a company that's relatively young. Sales um, are growing uh, quickly, but it's, it's really, in my opinion, at this stage in the company, especially with what we've had kind of happen over the last couple of years with COVID and some irregularities there, um, I think some of the year-over-year -year comparisons get a little skewed. So I focus more on the quarter-over-quarter -quarter comparison, and that's kind of what we're going to go over here. So first of all, I have backlog, right? And kind of, again, what I'm looking at is, is this change quarter over quarter. Um, you can see what we just got reported. These are the numbers uh, in column D here for Q3, right? That's the quarter that they just reported results for. And so if we just look at backlog here for a minute, you can see if we look at platform backlog specifically, right? Q2 was at 1.23 million. Q3 declined about 30,000 or so. Uh, to 1.2 million and then extract backlog also declined uh, just over 800,000 or so which puts total backlog decline from Q2 to Q3 uh, at around $900,000 or in other words 25% now that's a pretty significant decrease in backlog now that's not necessarily uh, something that we can look at in a vacuum here, right? Because we do have revenue coming in from that backlog. And some of that backlog is not actually subscription revenue, right? Some of that backlog is contracts that are signed that is pretty much going to be like an upfront payment or a large sum maybe at the beginning. And it's in backlog because that revenue just hasn't been recognized yet, but it's been contracted, right? So the next quarter, that revenue may actually go through, be recognized, and then we get a large chunk of that basically getting removed from backlog and input as revenue, okay? So we have to take a look at revenue here. Um, revenue, total revenue came in at 938,000, which also, again, one of the negatives here, revenue declining about 20% quarter over quarter from Q2, still up from Q1, so not too bad. Um, but again, declining what we'd really like to see from Patriot One, especially at this point in sales, is continuous kind of quarter over quarter growth. But again, as we've been told from Peter uh, in actually just the earnings uh, report, the earnings call that we just heard, sometimes you get delays in the contracts. And we heard that some of those delays were actually because of good things, right? You know, customers actually increasing the amount of units that they want to buy. So we'll get to that a little bit later in the video. Um, but you know, this revenue decline is definitely a negative here. You can see the revenue decline from the platform revenue uh, was pretty significant, down to 85,000 from uh, Q2 was 230,000 or so. So a 63% decline, and then about a 10% decline from extract. Now, um, to get into uh, the expenses here, and then I'll go into some charts, the expenses have been increasing, obviously, you know, that's not a positive, but if we look at the expenses, a lot of them actually decrease. The main increases we're gonna see here are R&D, which is understandable, they're still developing the product, um, and personnel, right? Uh, so those are kind of gonna be your main increases because you're hiring more people to expand, to develop the product, to sell the product, et cetera. Um, and, you know, again, with the R&D, you're still developing product. And then the other main uh, increase here is the share-based compensation. Um, I think a lot of this is around the offering that they did and some things that went along with that. I'm not positive, um, but I would imagine that is the case. And we'll probably see this decline in the fourth quarter. So. 
that's kind of general things around the expenses there. You can see the total expenses only increased about 5% uh, quarter over quarter from the second quarter to the third quarter. So really not that bad considering, you know, they're, they're kind of going at sales and marketing pretty aggressively, doing more hiring, a 5% increase, really, really not that bad. Um, and then if we look at the net loss here, just last thing before we get into the charts, um, you can see the net loss, and I have this, by the way, some of you guys might be looking at this and going, hey, this actually isn't the numbers that they've reported for net loss. It was like 3.1 million and then 3.5 million here. Um, this actually was, uh, I think, the exact number they reported. The reason that um, these are different is I am reporting this, or, or I am um, representing this here, excluding any COVID relief funding or other kind of non-dilutive funding because I'm trying to be conservative here and basically imagining that maybe they don't get that. Uh, but also actually the main reason that I'm doing this here is to try to get a more apples to apples comparison quarter over quarter. Because if one quarter you got a lot of extra non-dilutive funding like they did, I believe it was in the last quarter um, or the quarter before that they had you know only a loss of like a million dollars when really you know if you would have taken all of that funding out that that just a bunch of raytheon funding that they got that quarter you know it would have been that 3.5 or, or 3.8 million dollar loss and so if you're really trying to compare you know how well the company is uh you know doing operational wise in my opinion, I think this is just a better way to really look at it, kind of strip away all of that funding to get a more apples to apples comparison there. So that's why these numbers might vary a little bit. And some of these numbers in the expenses, especially the R&D and the personnel, which is generally where that non-dilutive funding goes in Patriot One's case, um, those these numbers might be a little different than maybe what you're seeing on the actual reports. Uh, in the last quarter, they really didn't have any um, non-dilutive funding it looks like. So most of these numbers uh, should be pretty much exactly the same as what you're seeing in the report. Now, just to get into a little bit of the charts here. So this is kind of the main one that I kind of wanted to show you guys here just to see the relationship between revenue and loss. You can see the loss is kind of slowly increasing there. Again, expenses are going to be increasing while uh, you're aggressively hiring, right, and marketing and things like that. Uh, and also, you know, when the revenue, Peter said the revenue is going to kind of lag the backlog, right? Because it takes a little bit for that money to kind of trickle down into revenue after they've, you know, signed the contract, they go through the installation, all of that. And then it's, you know, month over month, that contract is, you know, usually over a three year period. And so it's going to take a little bit for that revenue to kind of start to gain some traction there which is why when you're increasing expenses and you don't have revenue growing as fast, you're going to see likely that loss increase, at least in the short term until revenue starts to gain some traction. And then you'll start to see that reverse ideally, right? So that's kind of what I wanted to show you guys on that. Now, um, just to go over a couple of positives here that uh, I got from the call personally, one of them uh, was Peter's response about, as I mentioned earlier, some of the contracts being delayed until Q4 of this year, right? Um, and what he mentioned on why a lot of those contracts, or at least some of them, were being delayed was because customers were actually kind of rethinking after some of the testing that they've done, maybe some of the events, some of the shootings, um, you know, unfortunately, that we've had recently. And they're actually increasing the amount of units that they're going to order. He mentioned one fact, uh, manufacturing plant or, or company that they were working with. And he said they're increasing, I believe, by about 350% what their initial order was going to be. Um, instead of going with just one location, I think he said now they're going with uh, two or three locations. So that's obviously good to hear, um, you know, especially, you know, customer. Hey, we're thinking about buying this product before they even go through actually installing it at one location and testing it for a longer term, they're already going through and ordering more. So that's definitely a positive there. And the other main positive that I got from the call is his response to 
the question of whether or not they had inbound interest after his letter uh, about the school shootings and things like that. And he did mention that not only did they have several schools contact them, but also a school district and uh, you know a larger group of school districts or maybe a state, I forget exactly what he mentioned on the call, and talking about covering a large portion of the schools there and maybe even some city buildings as well. And so, you know, while unfortunately it takes something like this for these schools and, and you know, governments and, and whatnot to really think about solutions like this, hopefully this inbound interest is not only able to help Patriot One and, and us shareholders, but also hopefully Patriot One through this is, you know, able to potentially save some lives here. Uh, and so that's kind of uh, really what we're looking at. And so it's great to hear that schools and school districts and, and uh, you know, even city buildings are showing a lot more interest in possibly going with some of these solutions, VRS, and possibly maybe even later on using some MSG lanes there. That is great to hear. So those things were really good. You know, obviously the potential there is really great. We just have to start to see it in the financials here. And so, you know, again, we're just waiting kind of for that potential to manifest itself. One thing that I will be kind of watching too, we're coming to kind of the close of the season for the NHL and the NBA. We're in the playoffs at the moment, right? And so likely if there's going to be any sort of league approval or anything around there, it's going to be in the off season, right? It's going to be in the off season where, you know, the general managers and the league are going to have their, you know, off-season meetings, figure out how the next season is going to look, as well as just the individual arenas and whatnot are going to kind of reevaluate everything. Okay, what worked this season? How can we change it? And they're able to actually make those changes. You know, a lot of the contracts that Patriot One gets with sport te sports teams are likely going to happen in the off-season, which means there's going to be some seasonality in the sales here. And so, you know, Q3 is right, kind of one of those awkward times, at least for Patriot One, where uh, really the only major pro sports league that's in the off season right now is the NFL. Um, and that's kind of one where Patriot One really hasn't had a lot of traction. Once we get, I think, you know, maybe in the current quarter that we're in, and especially Q1, where we have, you know, uh, NHL and NBA in the off season, and then, you know, shortly after that, the MLB will, will be in the off season. Then I think, especially with those pro sports leagues, will be the times when those contracts will really start to come in. So, you know, not necessarily maybe the numbers that we wanted to see, but demand is still looking stronger and stronger. And, you know, we just got to hopefully see that show up in the results. But anyway, I'll leave you guys with that. Uh, hopefully, again, I will be posting more often soon. And other than that, I will see you guys next time and have a great day.